FanDuel Punch Out. I'm Jason Gilbo, J Gilbo 11. With me is Russell Clay at Russell J Clay. Sunday morning here, taking a look at the FanDuel slate, which is just nine games today. Um, you got a lot of West Coast options later on, but talking about the main slate and uh, a lot of pitching going on today. The Sunday morning rain is falling. <laughs> Yes, lots of pitching, uber amounts of pitching that we could have redistributed to uh, some other slates in the past and made us much happier. Um, but, hey, it is what it is, and we got what we got, and sometimes you just got to live life. You know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Indians and Blue Jays here, first one, and uh, Corey Kluber versus Jay Happ, and uh, 10 5 for Kluber there. Um, <laughs> I think he's a reasonable GPP option. Um, I still think you look at this back end of this lineup, and even Travis and Carrera, I think you will still work around Donaldson and Carnacion, and Saunders really hasn't been the great um, as he was earlier in the year. Uh, I think this lineup where Kluber's got some potential, but obviously that blow of facts are still there uh, against the Blue Jays. Yeah, I don't mind these prices um, for the Blue Jays quite as much as I do on DK, but at the same time, I don't think you're really targeting them against Kluber. Um, I'm I'm much more on the uh, going at sort of hap here with with some of the righties and um, in this lineup and and switch hitters and such. Yeah, I am too. And, you know, one thing I noticed over on DK, and it's kind of the same thing here, is Lindor is kind of priced down a little bit for facing mm. Lefty in the Rogers Center. I'm a bit intrigued. I mean, him, Davis, Davis coming off a, a you know, career game yesterday, hitting for the cycle with a stolen base. Um, Not he had bad. Happily at 3 3. So those three right handed bats, I like quite a bit here against Hap, who's, mm. you know, been serviceable, but overall got it, guy who I'm not really looking to shy away from either. And Carlos Santana. <laughs> okay, so here's my my beef with Santana is seven hundred more than Napoli. I think I take Napoli. I agree. I just wanted to do that. Um, I <laughs> I'm actually not on Santana that much. Um, <laughs> I, I I just wanted to do that. Um, that so really yeah, Roger, right, right. Rajai Davis and Lindor are really the guys I'm looking at strongly here. Mm -hmm. uh, Tigers and Rays. Next one here, you got Mike Palfrey versus Chris Archer. And um, one, once again, I mean, I like these these Rays prices. And um, mm. I like one through four there. I also like a Corey Dickerson at three, four. Um, intriguing yeah. options for me. Dickerson's just a GPP guy. I'm not touching him in cash games. But no. guys like Forsyth, Brad Miller, uh, Longoria, I, I like quite a bit. I mean, especially Longoria and Forsyth, those kind of prices are cheaper for a guy facing Pelfrey. With um, with Miller being actually less than Dickerson here, I, I think that kind of puts him out of play in a weird way. Um, I think you're looking at the one through four here if you are sort of going, going at this raise lineup, which I think is a great idea. So... Um, if you want to go with the lefties, that's fine. If you want to go with the righties, I mean, Pelfrey's been giving up more home runs to righties of late. So um, that's what, what you want to look at here. But at the same time, um, Miller and Morrison are decent options as well. Yeah, and as you mentioned, the righties, I mean, Pelfrey allowing a 374 Woba, 1.55 home runs per nine to right-handers. Uh, Pelfrey, I mean, 392 Woba to lefties, uh, home runs down a little bit, but still high, 1.19. So... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you can attack with both sides, and uh, I think the Rays are kind of a friendly offense today. Yes, sir. Uh, Tiger side of things, I'm not really intrigued with the prices here. Uh, it's just a stay away. Uh, there's no one even really for me. I mean, I know Upton's 2-2, two -two, yeah. but uh, he's a guy who I kind of see maybe going over 3 with a walking three strikeouts. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Brutal. Um, swinging strikeouts or looking? Uh, one looking, two swinging. Okay. We'll check well, you in. know what? You know what? At least they weren't all swinging, so that's not bad. Um, I think you, I, I'm I'm okay with him for twenty two hundred, but yeah, like you mentioned, not an optimal play. No, and I don't think really any of these guys at the prices really are. Um, it, it's kind of tough for me to look at them. Uh, you know, a Cabrera at four one or a Kinsler at three seven, not in not in good spots at all. Yeah, definitely agree. So. 
Uh, moving on to the Cubs Mets, and um, you know, both of us have talked about this game quite a bit. We we're really intrigued with with the pitching options, as anyone would be. Um, I like Noah Syndergaard. You were kind of leaning a little bit more on Lester's um, shoulders there. Um, look at look at the Cubs. I mean, middle of the road offense the last few weeks. Twenty four percent strikeout rate is pretty high. In uh, Syndergaard, I mean, just looking at him, I mean, fifteen percent swing strike rate, thirty percent K percentage, and uh, the guy's just been dominant all year long. For me, uh, I like Syndergaard here. Obviously, the win's going to be the big factor between the two, which really isn't that clear cut. Yeah, the only thing I can imagine is is if like Syndergaard starts making fun of like David Ross's kids, and then he gets like in dad mode, and he'll, he might hit a homer at that point. But beyond that, I don't think we're looking at the Cubs today. That's quite the narrative. <laughs> Like Noah Slater just sends out a, a tweet. Like, yeah, hey, like, hey, David uh, Ross, your kids didn't even make honor roll. Get them out of the dugout. Yeah, you know? your kids are really not good looking. Like, they're really average looking, David Ross. So, um, you're already balding, David Ross. Ross, I saw your I saw your wife at at Stop and Shop, and she like she was getting skim milk. Like, what are you a loser? And. Yeah, I mean, if he does stuff like that, I can see the dad power really coming out here. But beyond that, I mean, I don't really, I don't really see much. Um, <laughs> obviously, Rizzo, you like Rizzo's righty splits, but Syndergaard's a different animal. Yeah, and I mean, Lester, for you, I mean, is he? How are you treating this game? I mean, for me, I still think I'm pretty confident. Viable. I'm pretty comfortable with Lester, but I, I can understand um, the Mets have kind of been tearing it up of late, so I can understand being a little a little more on Syndergaard here, but I, I just like the strikeout potential. Yeah, and I think we like that. I mean, obviously both. It's it's there for both of them. Mm-hmm. So uh, overall, I mean, I for me, I can't see myself taking any hitters from this game. Um, no. Really little no. total here. It's just kind of a – I can't. I can't even make a recommendation for anyone to even throw out as a deep tournament play. Mm. I really can't. No, I mean Rizzo is thirty four, but again, you don't want to do that against Syndergaard. So yeah, I agree. Yeah, tough to tough to make any case for these hitters. Mm-hmm. For sure. Uh, Reds and Nationals here, and uh, we talked about Steven Strasburg, and um, I'm surprised to see him pitch today. Obviously, I mean, we've been in this spot before where he's been injury prone and and we've been in spots where he leaves the game after the third inning. That's my concern today uh, is he goes out and throws and doesn't pitch right. So I think I don't want to take that risk in cash on a, on a slate where there is four or five other pitching options that you can feel comfortable with. So he's the not- line is the right. line is creeping into the uh, the low 300s there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Nationals are going to win that game. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's, that's pretty nutty. Um, but yeah, no, I do agree. It, it is tough to take, take the gamble there. Uh, but you obviously do like him just looking at the basic matchup itself. You do like him, especially if Otto's not in there. Uh, I think you're firing away. Um, if, if, if you do, if you are confident, he's going to get at least five innings. If he does get five innings, um, I mean, there's a decent chance, but again, at 11-2, you kind of want more than just a chance at five or six innings, you know? Yeah, and that's always my thing. I mean, Strasburg never really goes deep into games anyway. you got to rely on him to get to that 9, 8, 9 yeah. plus, you know, strikeout, you know, potential, which, you mm-hmm. know, he obviously has here, and uh, and I do think a win is likely for him. Um, but once again, at the price, I mean, you got Syndergaard and Lester cheaper. Um, there's some other guys you can take shots at with and as far as GPPs go, so... I mean, Strasburg's in a great spot. Couldn't end up being one of the higher scoring pitchers on the slate. Would not surprise me. Uh, the only thing that's keeping me back is kind of the injury. And, and I think if he didn't have that, we'd be looking at him as definitely a cash game guy and playable in all formats. Agreed. Yeah. So, I mean, everyone knows the risk there, I think. So, as long as you understand that, then um, you can fire away in tournaments. Yeah, definitely. And uh, on the national side, I mean, with Lamb allowing out 354 well bit of righties this year, 1.59 mm-hmm. points per nine. Um, really like Jason Wirtz price here, 3,400. Really nice price tag for him. And um, I know you're not fond of kind of paying up a catcher, but I, I still think a Ramos is 3.6 is intriguing. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I like that quite a bit. Um, and I mean, even a Zimmerman. Uh, again, I I just think you like the righties in this lineup tonight. So fire away with all of them, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. I'm I'm with you there. Uh, moving on to the next game here, we got the Angels and Red Sox, and this is the one that you kind of take a little bit of time breaking down, and you don't have to take much time breaking down Sean O'Sullivan. You can fire away from both sides of the plate. And hell, if you were hitting fifth in this lineup, dude, I'd take you at 2,500. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I, I don't know about that one. Uh, unless Bobby Cox was in the uh, the dugout, you know, because I, I like to pretend I'm Adam LaRoche, as I've told you many times before. So, yeah, you well, I guess that would Adam mean I'd, I guess that would mean I would have to retire before the game, though. So, um, anyway, uh, I would not play myself at 2,500. Um, but yes, that the the story checks out in terms of of what we're looking at here. So, um, like Pujols, like Calhoun. The, this lineup is a little more expensive, but I, I'm I'm pretty pretty confident it pays off here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we talked about on DK, you know, guys like Pujols were, were a little bit cheaper. Calhoun was as well. Here they're, they're a little bit more expensive, but obviously certainly in play, um, you know. But looking at guys like Trout, I think he can pay off the 4-6 price tag. I don't mind the Unel Escobar 3-2. Um, so once again, I, I think 1-5, through five, they're all certainly playable against Sullivan, who's just been – a gas Bad. can. I mean, he's <laughs> horrible. So, um, uh, 20, 20 plus runs last night, and it, and it could get even worse today. I mean, they could legitimately uh, score 30 within two games today. I felt a little angst. Um, a little a little of the Boston fan in you is upset with this pitching staff right now. It's horrible. I mean, we got Sean O'Sullivan. and we're trotting yeah. him out there. I mean, I know. You know. And he might have a better start than Clay Buckholz. So that's what's <laughs> crazy. So he, he won't. I mean, it'll oh. probably be on par or worse. Um, what do yeah. they do with Clay at this point? Yeah, that's a mess. I, I think you have to. He's. They should just make him like. Uh, I don't know. I mean, shag balls in the outfield for BP yeah. for the rest of the year. <laughs> for the rest, and pay him minimum wage. At least you got Al Horford, and then who knows? Maybe after today, you got Kevin Durant too. So I know. I'm crossing my fingers. Yeah, you you did send in Tom Brady, but anyway, um, that was hilarious. I loved that moment yesterday when the pictures came out. But um, Royals Phillies. I think this is the game where we find our value at pitching. Um, if you are going to go that direction, um, Velasquez obviously coming off the big start. Um, and his first one back from injury and Ventura has a nice matchup against the Phillies. So, um, are, are those two guys you're looking at here, um, on, on this one pitcher format, or are you still, still stuck into the, uh, the higher end options here? No, they're definitely both playable in GPPs. Um, and my biggest thing here on Fandle is we got a lot of close calls as far as who's going to get the win. Uh, and that's going to kind of put you in a difference maker because it is 12 points and that, that win is weighed heavier here on, on Fanduel. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I do like both guys. I like Ventura just a little bit more because the Phillies offense strikes out a little bit more. And obviously they're not as potent uh, as far as the Royals can be. Um, but I do think the two guys here that, that do have a lot of potential for, for upside as far as strikeouts. Um, and I do think Ventura maybe sneaks away with a win here a little bit more than Vasquez, even though the Phillies are small, small, small favorites. Yeah, very, very minuscule is the word I would use, which is a nice word. That's a nice word, Jason. Someone played Scrabble on their Saturday night. <laughs> On my phone alone in the room with the lights off, yes. Um, yeah, uh, I, I don't necessarily disagree with, with the potential of Enter here, but I, I am leaning Vasquez, Velasquez just because um, I, I just like that last start, and I feel like he's a really good arm, and we're still getting him at a pretty decent discount. So I'm definitely leaning that there. But um, no no knock in Ventura's game. Um, for hitters... In this game, um, who are you looking at here? Nobody. I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think for catcher, Cameron Rupp is kind of a decent matchup, but other than that, I'm not really looking at anyone either. Yeah, it's a stay away situation and uh, kind of hop back a game. I mean, we kind of glossed, we didn't really mention the Sox bats, um, but some of those guys are at some decent price tags. I mean, Ortiz at 4 2, uh, a little bit easier to kind of deploy here. 
Um, but we kind of talked about outside of really him and bets, kind of others just being solely GPP plays. Yep. Yep. Um, as you mentioned, I do like Ortiz. I actually think he has a better chance of paying off his price than, uh, than trout, but at the same time, yeah, they're both high upside. Um, in, in terms of this Royals game now, yeah, I think we're just jumping over it, skipping that day. Normally, normally we, we, I tout the Royals in some way, shape or form, but, uh, probably not touching them tonight. No, and moving on to the White Sox and Astros, you got Colin McHugh versus Jose Quintana. Um, Quintana here, um, kind of like the rest of some of these arms. I mean, a win kind of needs to be there. Not necessarily sure it happens just because of that offense behind him. Um, clearly, I mean, you like the White Sox bats as far as matchup-wise more than you do the ha- the Astros against Quintana. Um but a Jose Altuve at 3-6, um, I like that quite a bit. I know Quintana's an mm. above average lefty, but – Hey, Altuve against the lefty at 3-6 is always going to be intriguing to me. That's kind of like, ooh, thank you. Um, <laughs> I mean, even the guys, the rest of the uh, Astros in the lineup are priced up. So, yeah, definitely like that price there. Uh, not really looking at the rest. Obviously, you are a little worried about that strikeout upside for Quintana when evaluating um, the Astros bats here. But but at the same time, an Altuve, decent value there. Um and on on the White Sox side, Adam Eaton, like you mentioned with McHugh on um on on DK, um, quite a bit upside there for him. And beyond that, it it gets a little tougher. Yeah, McHugh struggles with lefties. I mean, three seventy Woba uh, allowed this season, and you know it, this lineup is heavily right-handed outside of Eaton. I don't mind a DeAndre Navarro at twenty nine hundred. It's a friendly park there. You can take a shot on him if you want. Uh, just because we talked about catcher being relatively weak today. Um, yeah, for me, I mean, I, I think this game is GPP. Uh, I don't mind Altuve at 3-6. Um, I still don't mind a Springer. Uh, he's kind of always kind of my favorite guy here who can go off. Um, and all of them do have relatively high upside, but the floor is a little bit lower than you like for cash games. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and with that price, it kind of kind of puts him out of contention for me, at least in cash. Yeah, definitely. So definitely just a kind of a GPP game. I think this one could be one of those ones where, you know, maybe you get a 6-4 type game and and uh, a couple homers. So you kind of got to be picky with it. I'm not really looking to stack either of these two teams. Yeah, definitely with you there. Uh, Rangers and Twins, this next one, uh, Cole Hamels versus Kyle Gibson. I like Cole Hamels quite a bit here. Um, as we mentioned, I, I yeah. think there is some regression coming for him, but still decent swing strike rate, decent strike cat rate. You're Love. a little bit concerned with uh, – you know, the middle of the order there with some of those right-handed bats. But for me, I like Ham- Hamels quite a bit, and I think the win's there as well. Oh, oh, I love this price on, on FD. It was just that that price on um, DK that was getting me a little concerned. But, yeah, at 10, I, I think you fire him in there. He's borderline cash um, against this lineup. But, yeah, as you mentioned, I'm, I'm, I'm still a little worried about the righties in the middle here. But beyond that, uh, I, I think he should rack up some strikeouts and, and – throwing a quality start here and i really like the the rangers lefties in this matchup so that's kind of what we're looking at here with with uh shin su chu and, and nomar mazara mazara at 2800 with with those splits um is is a ringing ringing headache in my my left ear or maybe that's not mazara and that's just a headache and ringing in my ear but um yeah i really you like want to get that checked out <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, as you mentioned, I mean, Gibson, 362, well, but the lefties this year. Um, yeah, uh, I like Mazzara. Chu, not quite the big value he was on DK, but I still think 3,800. Um, he's worth a look. Um, I don't mind a no door at 2,900 either. Um, I think those those lefties are intriguing. Obviously, Fielder's still kind of a cheap first baseman who's obviously hasn't shown the home run potential, but he is starting to come around as far as, you know, not getting a couple of hits a game there. So starting to become a part of the offense, which really we haven't seen for quite a while. Finally. Um, yeah. I mean, he's, he's in, he's getting some hits, racking up some hit streaks here and uh, finally playable again at 27. And, and as you, as you mentioned, Kyle Gibson, not too strong of an arm. So um, I think we can fire away with these Rangers bests. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Brewers Cardinals last game on the main slate. Uh, Michael Walker versus Chase Anderson. Walker seven four here. Um, he's, you know, 
relatively about the cheapest pitcher you can feel comfortable with. Um, mm. I think he's a deep GPP option if you're looking to get some big bats in, um, like a Mike Trout and kind of pair him with some other mid-priced guys. So uh, you look at the Brewers, I mean, um, a high strikeout rate against right-handed pitching. Um, Waka is a minus 170 favorite here, which you got to like, and you got to like the offense on the Cardinal side to back him with some run support. So as a single bullet, um, I don't mind Waka at 7-4. A silver Coors Light bullet or a, or a single yeah, bullet? No, it's definitely a Coors Light bullet. It's like, you know, <laughs> Waka is, Waka is the, you know, the Coors Light of beer. I mean, <laughs> of pitching. I mean, that's yeah. just how he is. Especially on this slate. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's going to – He's, he's, he's going to light, you know. Are your you lineups know. doing well? Well, Michael Waka is going to come in and give you the Coors Mountains treatment tonight when he gives up five <laughs> runs in the first. No, he's definitely not doing that. I know, I know. He's he's actually, yeah, no, I do like this matchup. Um, and again, you gotta love this price as as a sort of a single one off in a tournament or or something like that. I don't mind Valar in this matchup if you are looking at the Brewers, but hopefully you're not looking at the Brewers. Um, there there's plenty of other matchups to sort of exploit instead of them, you know. Yeah, definitely. And on the Cardinal side, I mean, you're looking at Anderson. I mean, against righties this year has been awful. 417 mm. Wobo allowed 40% hard ball rate, really low ground ball yeah. rate, 2.50 home run per nine. Two through four, you got the right handers. Um, Diaz, Holiday, Piscotti, I mean, all, you know, different price tags and different positions I think you can kind of work with here. Uh, I don't mind the Cardinals offense. And obviously, Carpenter against the right hander is always going to be kind of mentioned. Um, yeah. Probably play, but. Really, one through four is how I'm looking here. Uh, I think we're all kind of looking at that Matt Holiday 3200 price as sort of a solid to decent value there. Um, but like you mentioned, those guys, uh, Yadier Molina is a cheap catcher. Um, I, I think this is a lineup you can fire away at. And obviously, they're much more reasonable here um, than they are on uh, DK. So I, I, I do like this offense, um, and I like it a lot more here. So... Definitely yeah, what we're looking at. Yeah, I'm definitely in agreement with you. So uh, let's kind of wrap things up here at the FanDuel Punch Out. Be sure to check out DaveFantasyCafe.com for all great tools and content.